all right guys as always the first step is to pick up your colorless brush and blend all those outlines out so the first thing i'm going to show you is how i do the eyes and i'm gonna cheat a little bit here so i'm just gonna show you how i go ahead with all that and i will tell you why i do that but the first step is to always blend those sketch lines with the colorless brush and if you don't know how colorless brush works and what is the difference between smudge brushes and the colorless ones there's a video i will link it down in the description please do watch that and yeah that's what we're doing so all in all i'm just blending the outlines and because with the help of colorless brush i'm spreading the color out like this it should look like this you can actually use a colorless brush to shade it's like a colorless brush is like a q-tip if you know traditional art you will know what i'm talking about when you use q-tip to kind of spread the pencil shade all around so because i'm shading eyes first i added this grayish white kind of color where the white part is that's what i'm doing here very simple so i do that for both of the eyes and i will be back once you're happy with that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to import this Iris PNG. What I did is I just created this and saved it. It is color changing. So I have it on my Gumroad so you can download it for free. It just makes life so easy, especially if you actually draw the same kind of Iris for every portrait painting. It's really easy to kind of create those and save those in, as PNGs. And whenever you're drawing a portrait, you just add those like this, so like a cheat, a little bit of cheating here but i was the one drawing these similarly i added the eyelashes png basically i created these eyelash stem brush for procreate i don't know how to add these brushes on sketchbook but if you guys want i can always upload the pngs of these because i'm using a png right here as well so for the eyes basically i just imported all the eyelashes that i already drew on procreate and i saved those as pngs and I'm just importing those. It just makes life really, really easy, you guys. So eyes are pretty much done. They're looking really good. And I, for the eyebrows as well, I did the same. I added a PNG of the eyebrow I created for stamp brushes, I believe. And yeah, that's what I'm using right here for the eyebrows as well. Just makes the whole process so easy, you guys. So if you want it for sketchbook, I would happy to upload on the my gumroad some pngs so that you can just download those and use those on your portrait painting so eyes are pretty much done you guys so now once the eyes are done the next step is to actually again because i did not actually blend the sketch lines for the whole face that's what i'm gonna do first and i will be back so once you are happy with the blended sketch lines, you want to create new layer and keep it under every other layer you have created. Here I have a color palette. I picked up a color slightly darker than the skin color. Also, mind you guys, because my background is also skin colored, I did not add any skin color on the face. But if your background is different, make sure you add the skin color first and then you create another layer for the shadows. So here we are just very randomly and very roughly adding this color. This is looking very, very messy right now, but just trust the process. It's all about trusting the process. So I'm adding this shade wherever I think I wanna add the shadow. So the key here is to, we are gonna add this color. So this is like slightly darker than the skin color. Then we are going to go ahead with a color which is even more darker than the color we are using right now. So I'm just going to skip to that part. So as you guys can see, I picked up this darker shade of the shadow color we just used. This time around, what you want to do again, create another layer for it. Add this color with a small sized brush over the base layer of shadow we created so it should not be spread out a lot this darker color should not be spread out a lot but just a tiny bit small size of it if that makes any sense that's what we're doing create another layer for the blush you know keep it messy keep it messy don't worry about it we are going to blend it all out that's what this video is about by the way so i added this blush color as well and create another layer and pick up this um, deep maroon color and again this time around decrease the size of the brush 
even more because we don't want a whole lot of it we want we want just a little bit of this color a little, a little touch of this color okay so as you guys can see I just drew these really tiny thin lines right in between the darkest brown or skin kind of color that we added previously that's what you want to do that that is it and I also added some of it right underneath the eyes as well so yeah that's the first step make sure everything is in a separate layer so that we are not messing stuff out and before we move forward I also decided to finish the lips so I picked up this color and for the lips what I do when I am drawing on sketchbook is I add the color on the lips in the middle of the lips and then I pick up my colorless brush to spread the color out and to kind of create some kind of shadow or the whole shape for the lips and the reason why I love using sketchbook is because of the colorless brushes okay no other software I believe has uh, that kind of brush set and that's the reason why I love using sketchbook because it has this brush and just makes life so fucking easy so added this color and using the colorless brush make sure the flow is decreased the opacity of the brush is um, not up to the max because it's just gonna ruin everything it's gonna be really hard to control the brush but just decrease the opacity and just do just spread the color out i'm just going to speed through this process so you guys can see how i do it now once the lips are done we are coming back to the first layer of shadow picking up our favorite colorless brush increase the size of the brush you can pick any colorless brush from the set it uh, it is up to you make sure the opacity is low here all you have to do is blend and blend in a way where because you are using a colorless brush you are going to be spreading out the color a little bit more as compared to when you use a smudge brush so blend in a way where the shadow is where it should be if that makes any sense be patient with the process okay and it's really simple you just have to blend it out you just have to blend it out and if it's hard for you to blend out focus on blending on the edges of the shadow only if it is a little hard for you just focus on blending the edges of the shadow and that will be it but just blend it out blend the first layer first as i'm doing right here i'm gonna spread through it and um, jump on to the next section now similarly going on to the next layer of the darker shadows doing and following the same exact step taking the colorless brush and blending it out again in a way where we're spreading the color where it actually sticks to the place or to where it should be if that makes any sense so there's much nothing much to explain the next step is basically just to blend these guys out and that is it i actually ended up changing my colorless brush I, I i think i picked up colorless marker and decreased opacity and increased the size because when you increase the size it's kind of easier to blend colors out by the way by the way if you're st still struggling with blending colors i have in-depth tutorial on it as well so i will link all the videos which you should be watching down in the description so do check that out but again here i am just blending it out again and yeah that is easy 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 so i'm just gonna again jump on to the next step going on to the maroonish shadows again picking up my colorless brush and blending it out the key here is um whenever you are blending these out like this one i'm not gonna i might not use a brush which is super duper large in size because i don't want this maroon color to spread out to the whole face if that makes any sense the shadow should look like it is coming uh, from this really deep dark color and actually merging with the skin that is the reason why we first added shadows with a color uh, which was like slightly darker than the skin color then we went even darker then we went in this with then we went in with this maroon color which is even more darker than any of the shadow we created so 
what that is going to do is that is going to make the whole shadow look as if it starts from this really dark kind of color and then it starts to blend in with the skin becoming lighter and lighter i hope this makes sense but that's how you actually paint skin or skin shadows i hope this is making sense the reason why i use maroon color is because i wanted to add a touch of you know this pink or red kind of color to the skin because skin has blood in it and you kind of want to you know show it through the face if you only use just one if you only use colors from just one undertone your skin or the painting your painting is going to actually look quite ashy so going back to blush again uh, blending it the same way i blended all the shadows right now it's looking really really uh, messy and not good at all the nose look the nose looks really really flat but do not worry about it this is just a first step this is the easiest step ever and this process is the easiest process ever to paint skin or portrait so i'm just gonna skip to the next part here i'm just blending the blush once everything is blended what you want to do you want to create a new layer above every other layer you have you want to go back to the shade colors so i'm picking up this dark brown color and airbrush so you can see the icon which is uh, selected right on the screen just choose that brush i'm forgetting the name of it a sketchbook has a lot of airbrushes so i'm using that airbrush and using that airbrush i am adding that color really lightly wherever i think i blended stuff out a little more and which is going to happen if you're blending all the shadows out with colorless brush it is going to look a little bit flat but it's going to give you a really nice base to begin with and you wouldn't need to go in depth and add more and more of shadows because we have already created this first layer of shadows so as you guys can see i do not even need to add any other color just by adding this brown kind of color over the shadows we created it's already looking good so i'm going to add this color over wherever i added the shadows and i'm adding it on the contours of the cheek um, underneath the lips on the forehead and yeah that's what i'm gonna do and i'm gonna make sure that i'm doing it really light-handed and even if you don't do it light-handed this brush is actually really really um what do you say it's not um, it does not add a lot of pigment of the color on the drawing so even if you're not light-handed you're still gonna get real good results so yeah that's what i did right here picking up this color went back in and added more shadows wherever i think i need more so right now it's looking way better than it did before and then the same way i picked up this maroon color added this maroon color on the crease of the eye focused more there because you want to create a depth there and the only way you get depth on the crease of the eye is when you add the darkest color in the middle and it blends out to be become lighter and lighter and merges with the skin so i did add it around the nose underneath or around the nose and also on the contours or the cheeks or a tiny bit of it and i'm using i'm on the same layer i did not create another layer by the way the head looks like an egg for some reason maybe because she doesn't have no ears maybe i just need to add ears and then maybe she's gonna look good i don't know the head looks like an egg i also went back to with this pink color and added this blush once again you don't have to do it because uh, she was already pink once you're happy with all of that i picked up this skin color which is the background color actually which is the base color you used i'm gonna add under i'm gonna add this color underneath the eyes on the forehead down the bridge of the nose basically wherever you want to add a little bit of highlight highlighting is really really important whenever you are painting a portrait highlights are as important as the shadows now once you're happy with that we are going to be highlighting the face and we will be done with the portrait painting so here i picked up white color again using the same airbrush and lightly adding this color um, on the cheekbones down the bridge of the nose tip of the nose and yeah on the forehead a little bit just to make it pop and also i highlighted the lips for the lips do not use white color to highlight just pick up the lip color and 
just pick up a lighter version of that color to highlight the lips and yeah that's how you shade skin it's looking good already and that's how you blend colors it was easy it's the easiest process ever if you follow this process you're gonna get the same results i really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you did give this video a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys in the next video